Uh, what you doing, Tom? Uh, I caught that supply. I just can't what? help myself. What are you supposed to be doing, Tom? Uh, deck railing. Do I need to take the knife away from you? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> it's it's really hard for you to resist the new project, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I have to say I'm feeling fairly optimistic about our projects right now. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. I mean, okay, the deck, we're going to give you an update on the deck. It's not done. Nobody was nobody was expecting it to be done this week, right? No, I don't think we set that I expectation. Even, I even said that. <laughs> like, it, don't even no, think that. Correct. No, Yep. But uh, we came up with a kind of a cool solution for the skirting around the deck, thanks to your help. So we'll show you that. But we also mm -hmm. want to give you an update on the camper. So we did end up pulling up the flooring, the linoleum, just to get an idea of how bad the water damage was. And because I could, couldn't could not. Yeah. But we also did want to get the drying equipment in there. Oh, come on. And we talked about before, like, unfortunately, these campers, the way the floor is designed, you have linoleum on top and a waterproof membrane on the bottom, so there's just like no chance of it drying out when it gets wet if it doesn't get somehow uncovered. There we go. Woo! Some carpet. Alright. See how the black moment it is. of truth. Oh yeah. Yep. Alright, let's go um, get, get some, some masks and get this thing. Yeah, so Tom pulled it up and I think the one section under the window that we knew that the previous owners fully disclosed to us was rotten. Yep. I think that was about what we were expecting. I actually expected it to be worse. Oh, well that's fun. <laughs> I, I did because because the bed was there and I couldn't really walk under the bed and feel yeah. that super great. Mm -hmm. Just knowing how, how the other camper was with yeah. water, I thought, you know, I bet you it's going to be a lot worse than what... No, it's, it's much better than what I expected. Yeah. So then Tom um, started just pulling everything out, all of the wet stuff. Um, Doing what I do best. It was so funny. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't in there when we did it. He had the mask on and we had air scrubbers and stuff running. But I was just watching back over the video of you pulling up the floor and I'm like, oh my goodness, flashback to you doing that same thing in our first camper. <laughs> like things we thought we would oh. never ever do again like we never thought we would be doing this again in a another so, camper <laughs> so this one this one was night and day better than the old one i mean i'm in shorts and a t-shirt oh. i was wearing carhartt insulated bibs and sweatshirts right. and stocking caps in the old one it was so with cold. two heaters going because it was freezing yeah that's true that did make a big difference oh man it? totally different so you got all that rift up. We ran the dehumidifiers in there, and so... I think we ran the equipment for about 72 hours. Mm -hmm. We have had a commercial fan and dehumidifier running for the last 48 hours, uh, non-stop. Um, and so what you want to do... Um, stuff getting wet isn't the biggest issue. It's, it get, it's staying wet and turning moldy, which is what happened here. So... To eradicate that, you remove the rotten stuff. You get a lot of air moving. You run the dehumidifiers for an uh, extended period of time until all the material is dry and all the mold is killed. And the other thing you couldn't, uh, you can't tell right now is that it got up to like 110 degrees oh, <laughs> in <yeah>. here, <laughs> yes. uh, which also helps it to dry out faster and make sure all the mm -hmm. mold gets killed so it's not going to keep... Yeah. Anybody who's, yeah, anybody who's ever had um, a, a legit company come in and um, re do mold remediation, drying out of a wet basement and all that stuff, knows that the equipment puts off a lot of heat and it is meant to help dry out and bake out your mm -hmm. space. Yeah, so it actually, uh, we were able to moisture test it. Everything mm -hmm. is that's left is dried out. So I feel like you pulled out everything that, need to be, yeah, that yeah. needed to be pulled out. So that's good. So that feels good. And so, so we'll do like kills paint over anything that's not getting pulled mm -hmm. out. And this is all hard. It was, just, it was just water surface on it. It didn't saturate and rot like it did over here. Mm -hmm. so, so none of this is soft. It's all totally fine. We'll square all this up, cut more material out so that it's easy to put new stuff in. Uh, we'll epoxy it all down and glue everything together and then we'll just coat everything with Kills paint. The epoxy will also create like a hard shell over the top of anything that was damaged and it will encapsulate it so it couldn't start rotting ever mm -hmm. again. 
It also keeps it so it doesn't fall apart. And then we're also going to pull up the rest of all of this linoleum. I mean, we were planning on putting new flooring down anyways, but mm -hmm. then we'll be able to make sure there's no more moisture anywhere else. Yep. Obviously, this linoleum really holds in the moisture along with the the moisture barrier on the bottom. So it just, the water gets sandwiched in there and there's nowhere for it to go to yeah. get dried back out. And then the other thing, I know there was concerns with our last camper that, <clears throat> excuse me, mold spores can get in the air. They can get into anything that's like fabric and stay there. So we are planning on taking down like the things around the windows. We did try to cover the couch so that, um, cause we're gonna reuse that yeah, for a while. Yeah, all these will go. We did all that in the old camper too. So all those will go out of the new one. So everything's really dry now mm -hmm. in there. And then mm -hmm. you did find another spot on the other end of the slide mm -hmm. that was also leaking, which causes us to wonder, is the slide leaking? Is that part of what contributed to the area by the bedroom too? Um, yeah, I, I still am not in 100% agreement that it was the window that did the damage up front. Okay. And actually it's interest, It's funny, so the, the previous owners that we bought it from We've been messaging back and forth through Marketplace, and uh, they wanted to see the damages. They yeah. were like genuinely curious Interested, and stuff. Right, yeah. So I sent them the damages of the front when we found it, and they were like, oh my goodness, we had no idea it would have traveled that far. So then when I found more, I was like, I'll just send this to them with another little cute message that we still yeah. love the camper and all this stuff. I'm not like blaming them no. for anything. Mm -hmm. But they were shocked. They were like, we had no idea that there was another spot that had gotten water. Some of you had left comments too, like, well, probably all older campers have oh, this. Yeah. And I, I'm guessing I would bet they do. I would bet more than half have some, some damage kinda. that you've never known about. And it's just with some of them, it gets to the point, like in this one, in the bedroom area, like you, like I accidentally stepped there once and I was like, oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> it's like it caused you to lose your balance. But then the <laughs> other section on the other end of the slide, you really had to hunt for that. Like, I don't think if, had we not known to be looking for this, mm -hmm. I don't think you would have found it. No, and that's like, I get this this thought of, okay, we found this one spot, I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. And I'm going to, I will find more, even if yeah. it doesn't exist. And yeah. so I walked around that camper on my heels only, yeah. right? And I felt a little bit of squish and cracking. That's why I started cutting around back there because yeah. I was like, there's something under here. I got to find it. I know it. I know it. Found it. <laughs> so we'll see how far we have to take that side of it. You are a little concerned about the slide when it's sliding out. It doesn't go completely smoothly and it seems like part of the wall is catching. Like it, it's like going out, catches it and then keeps going. Yeah. So the, so the slide does like a, a little, a little like hop when it starts. Yeah. Which, which raises some concern in my mind. It's also extremely slow, but it's a really big slide. So I don't, so really, don't, know, I don't really know. Yeah. So you're going to investigate that a little yep. bit more. So hoping that that's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, because uh, we, we have plenty of other things to do with it. Yeah, well, we want to get to the fun stuff, like putting in the new flooring. Oh, and... I thought you meant hooking it up and going camping. That's a question. Well, that too. That's a question I want to ask you, though. We were talking about painting it. Like, we'll, we'll paint the whole inside again just yep. for fun. Um... <laughs> For and fun. so on our last camper, we used the little rollers and paint brushes and we had to do one layer of primer and two to three layers of paint. And so I said for this camper, it's bigger and that I think it would be worth masking it off and using a, a paint sprayer to do those layers. And Somebody Tom does thinks, not agree with that. <laughs> Tom is on. So team Tom is for rolling it and painting it again. Um, I am thinking that I would rather, the type of work I would rather do is even if it takes the same amount of time is to mask everything off and spray it because I think you get a better finish and a more even finish. Like we had brush marks and stuff on the cabinets and stuff. So I think it'd be worthwhile to mask it and spray it. All the flooring will be out. All of the upholstery stuff will be out. Like we're going to strip it out again. So... I would be curious if, if you're all surprised. Yeah. Um, so I would be curious if you have experience with that and and which you think would be better or easier. Right. And I think that sounds like a humongous mess. Um, spraying. Spraying. Okay. So with brushing, we can control where it goes. So I would be curious um, if you have any experience with that and what your recommendation would be. Yep. So that's where the camper's at, but I'm also excited about where the deck is at because, well, two things had to take place. Um, Tom had to pour footings for the steps that were going down, and then we found a cool solution 
for the skirting around the deck. So uh, first we had to get the stairway going down done. So I dug a footing um, where the steps, where all the stringers are gonna land. So all the stringers are sitting on a footing right now. And then I concreted in the two bottom posts. Um, so I had to dig those pretty deep. So we did, so, so that's all done and poured. Mm -hmm. And then there was a little triangular piece of grass sticking outside of the deck into the driveway. So we dug that out and mixed up concrete and poured that and then all the kids stuck their hands in yeah. it. Yeah, and, so. and our dog even came by. And the dog decided <laughs> later that night she would go and... Put a paw print in it. <laughs> yep. And then you got the, we found decking boards, uh, mm -hmm. which was fun. And so those have been put on, uh, so you put those on the stairs. And Tom did like a cool, around the whole decking of the of the deck and then also on the steps you did the picture frame style, is that what mm -hmm. it's called? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it took you way longer. <laughs> like it took so much way longer. Way longer. There's a lot more extra bracing I had to do on just the deck and each stair tread to be able to do the, the picture frame mm -hmm. style of, a, of decking. Um, but I think it looks fantastic. And then also then cutting the boards like that yep. and around the posts and stuff. So yep. it looks really cool and I think it really like brings it up a level and in how it looks so mm -hmm. I'm glad you did that and this is what people see like when you first drive up to our house even mm -hmm. though it's not like technically our front door like the porches right. but this is what people see when they drive up so mm -hmm. I, I like the extra work you put into it to make it look really nice and by doing all this there's no end grain yeah you, you see zero end grain anywhere yeah no so. it looks really good and so then uh, last week we were talking about how like around the bottom of the deck we were just planning on getting black plastic lattice I mean, that's what you put under a deck right for the skirting yeah. and then uh, there's a great comment that showed a picture on Pinterest of using uh, The picture was horizontal boards, but that caused us to look a little bit further And then we saw some pictures of people that did vertical boards underneath their decks and so uh, I was able to talk Tom into doing that <laughs> It's gonna look very fancy I feel like very fancy for us. Yeah. <laughs> for other people, this might not be fancy. For other people, they might be like, really? That's, that's what you're doing? That's fancy, huh? That sure is fancy. <laughs> Alright, well, let's get this thing going. Yeah. Compared to the plastic lattice we were, were going to put up, this is fancy. <laughs> Now we just got to keep the kids from throwing stuff inside of here once it's all done. Yeah, right, because there's no getting it. Once... By kids, I mean the boys. Like if something goes in there, it's not coming back out. <laughs> Which I think looks I think it looks really awesome. Nice. Longevity concerns. Mm -hmm. So we sprayed it. It's, it's not treated material. We sprayed it with cedar side, so it should be, mm -hmm. it should be good as far as and then we'll stain it so again so, the cedar side allows us it it's a tree it treats the wood so yeah. anything that's untreated you can treat it with or like our deck we have we bought green treated lumber but we mm -hmm. wanted to be able to stain and paint it right away and so by by spraying the cedar side on you can stain or paint in three days and mm -hmm. so that's what we're doing with everything so if you see us painting or staining right away um it's because why, we did yeah. that and yeah. we do have a code for 15 percent off down below so um, right. you can check that out anyway so we did so, put that on these boards right so we sprayed we sprayed all the non um treated lumber with cedar side so it's not going to rot i'm not worried about that yeah the only concern i have is right now all the grading under the deck goes towards the driveway and with what we're doing, it kind of stops that. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder if that bottom edge is gonna rot faster. Kind of, so I'm doing. So can you keep it up just a little bit? That's what I've been trying to do. Keep yeah. it up just a hair, so that water will run. But even yep. even like in the wintertime with snow, I know like I'll it's have to be really there. intentional on scraping snow away from this whole thing. Otherwise, it's just gonna have moisture slammed up against it yeah and i know uh in the last video we were going back and forth i wanted to paint like the ledge board or the face board white but then when we decided to we do... won we won <laughs> when we decided to do this vertical board skirting underneath then i said i would still love to see the face board white and this black but i told tom that we can stain it all so everything from the decking down will just be stained kind of a, a little bit darker wood color so i think this is gonna look awesome no like, i think it'll look really nice the white and black <laughs> just kind of you know whatever it's i the think white and black style, i think if so. you look around we kind of have a lot of white and black we do going have on. a lot of white and black so we are going to stain all that so i do think it's going to look really nice i think 
I, I mean, it's turning out. You were gone uh, for a couple of days helping your your sister with her roof on her house, yep. and so you said you drove back in and you were like, "Dang!" <laughs> I drove back in and I was like, mm, "I don't know that we're fancy enough for that deck." <laughs> now with the little skirting underneath what yeah. we're doing, I was like, "We're getting mm, fancy." But know. what was really cool is that this like vertical wood that we're doing is actually cheaper than what it would have cost to do the plastic yeah. lattice and trim pieces and so yeah. um so i feel like it, it looks way nicer but it's it wasn't even more expensive so so yeah that's why i'm feeling pretty optimistic i feel like the deck is coming together we still won't say when it'll be done but um <laughs> we're making progress i'm still trying to well, keep tom focused on this before fully turning his attention to the camper which we've been doing which i really appreciate mm -hmm. so I think I think getting all of the rest of the building done on the deck is no big deal. It's the staining because we have to make sure that weather is permitting and all that. Yeah. So. Yep. All right. So that's where we're at for this week. But we hope you have a really great weekend. As always, it's always fun to hear what you're up to if you're doing projects, if you're hanging out, doing some decluttering, uh, maybe too. Oh, we should probably mention that our home. Actually, hold on. Our so we're homeschooling this year. Are you homeschooling this year? I'm curious how many people are new homeschooling and are switching to it. Switching yeah, or if you know people that are. Great. So our homeschooling group will be open just a little bit longer. We got started this week and it is so awesome. Like we're doing daily videos with everything from curriculum to simplifying your homeschooling space. We did our first Facebook Live on Wednesday and it was so awesome. It is a, it's a really cool community and we're just excited to help you get homeschool set up well, but also the rest of your house functioning really well too. So you said that your Facebook Live was really awesome. What what made it awesome? What about it was really? I think there's just so many good questions about like, what curriculum should I use for my kids? Should my kids be reading yet? Or if we have squirrely kids, like how do you keep their attention? What do you, how do you balance if you're working too? So. Were you asking those questions? Yeah, I know, right? Because <laughs> like, I just check, checked check, all check. those off. Yeah, and it's so fun because Angela and Lisa, they have tons of experience between the two of them but they also have different approaches and that I think everyone can relate to one of them with maybe a little bit more laid back approach or more of a, I don't know what the other style is, but anyway, so I think it's fun to see the different styles and everyone else in the group is so incredibly helpful too. So it's just, I don't know, it's been really encouraging and, and fun. So we'll put all the details for that down below, but we hope you have a really great weekend. We love you and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.